Hi, my name is Jesse from Associated Environmental Systems. This video covers basic operating functions of the MX9200 series salt spray chambers. The MX series chambers are built with double wall construction arranged to provide warm air circulation between the inner and outer walls. Blowers and heaters located in the base circulate warm air in a closed loop. There's a thermostat located within the testing area of the chamber, which we set at the factory to control the temperature to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus two degrees. The salt atmosphere is generated via the nozzle. The nozzle uses compressed air to siphon the salt solution from the reservoir and atomize it. The compressed air is first heated and saturated by bubbling it through a heated water of the saturation tower. A heater located inside the tower is controlled by a thermostat that is factory set to maintain a tower temperature of 114 degrees Fahrenheit, or 45.5 degrees Celsius. By saturating the air at a temperature higher than the air temperature at the salt spray nozzle, a small amount of condensing moisture continuously purges the nozzle and reduces the tendency for the salt solution to crystallize and clog the nozzle. Also, it assures consistent conditions at the nozzle as to provide a uniform atmosphere inside the test chamber. The salt solution should be prepared in accordance with whatever test specifications you are trying to meet. Many standards require a 20% salt solution, which would translate to two pounds, one ounce sodium chloride per gallon of distilled or demineralized water. The thermostat located in the testing area of the chamber controls the temperature inside the chamber at 95 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus two degrees, or 35 degrees Celsius. The thermostat controls an air heater mounted to the blower. This thermostat has been factory set and should not require adjustment. If it is necessary to change the temperature, the thermostat can be adjusted. Turning the adjustment screw clockwise decreases the temperature. Adjustments should be made in increments of no more than one eighth turn. Allow adequate time for stabilization before making additional adjustments. The following sequence of operation should be followed at the start of every test. Set the chamber in a level location. Connect the vent line, ensuring that it is free of restrictions. Fill the tower reservoir. Fill the salt reservoir to within one inch of the top and replace the reservoir cover. The temperature of the solution should be at 95 degrees Fahrenheit or lower when filling the reservoir. Check the chamber for level. Fill the top cover trough and close the cover. The top cover of the chamber has a water seal to prevent salt fog from entering the room. Fill this trough periodically with distilled or demineralized water. It is important that the chamber be properly leveled in order to provide a satisfactory seal. Connect the chamber compressed air supply. Ensure that the air is supplied at the correct pressure. Open the chamber air valve. Turn the compressed air supply on and with the selector valve in the salt spray position. Place the tower switch in the on position and place the circulation and chamber switches in the on position and check the following. Air should bubble up through the saturation tower. A fine mist should emerge from the atomizing nozzle. There should be air flowing through the exhaust line and there should not be any air bubbling through the water seal around the cover. After the chamber temperature has stabilized, which should be approximately 30 minutes after the chamber pilot light first starts to cycle on and off, check the chamber and tower temperatures. Observe the temperature of all heated areas, making sure that the maximum temperature stated in the manual are not exceeded. Check the proper action of the thermostats by observing the electric panel pilot lights. These lights should cycle when various temperatures are near their set point values. Check for proper operation of the salt spray nozzle. The chamber, when stabilized, is ready for use. At the end of the test, place the selector switch in the purge position and check the following. That air is being admitted directly to the chamber and that air is flowing freely from the exhaust. Thank you for watching the MX9200 operation video. In the next video of this series, we will go over maintenance of the salt spray chamber. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact Associated Environmental Systems directly by phone or email. I'm Jesse and thanks for watching.